So Instagram stories have become such a big deal. A lot of people are watching stories more than they're actually looking at your feed. So are you doing everything you can to be showing your brand on Instagram stories consistently? Keep watching to find out how you can start using Instagram stories better as I am speaking to a Instagram stories expert about what she does in her business. Hello, I'm Kate Emily and welcome to my channel. I'm a brand and content strategist who helps small businesses share their brand story online. So in this video, I'm chatting to Eloise Smith, who is a VA come social media manager, who is an incredible storyteller on Instagram stories. She's just completely nailed the way she does this. And I would highly recommend you go checking her out um, as you're watching this video uh, on Instagram because she's so great at Instagram stories that you're gonna get so many insights and ideas for ways you can start creating more content through the platform. So let's get into it. Hi Eloise, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Hi Kate, uh, thank you so much for asking me to be part of this. I feel quite honoured that you wanted to chat to me about this, so thank you. Of course, so Eloise, you are such a gun on social media. You are a VA, um, so you've really, really nailed the way of telling your brand story um, for a service-based business. And one way you've done that so well is through stories, and I absolutely love what you're up to on there. So I'm so excited to get into this interview to be able to share some of your tips. Um, but Eloise and I connected on Instagram, obviously, um, and we we basically are both from Perth and we connected on there and then met up from coffee and from there it was just kind of, we just vibe so well. So um, I'm really happy to have you in my little girl boss click in Perth. It's so good. I love having all these supportive people that we can, like not only just internet friends, but people that you can catch up with in real life because we all know that being a small business owner is hard sometimes and it can get lonely. So it's good to be able to catch up and actually see people in person and how good's coffee. <laughs> oh, so, so good. Um, but I would love you to just share a little bit about your story and how you got into becoming a VA. Okay, so I basically started my VA business seven months ago, so not that long, um, but I have a background in communication, so I've studied journalism and PR, um, and after graduating, I hadn't really done much with it. I thought it wasn't something I wanted to pursue, and worked in a few different jobs, including my most recent one would be flight attending, and... I think once I, when I was doing that, I realized how much I hated that lifestyle. I needed to be home and I hated that I was not doing something that gave me purpose. I felt like my skills weren't being utilized and it really gave me that drive to start something. And I guess a lot of people kept telling me I should be doing things with social media. I'm really good at social media. So yeah, that was the, the start of my business and basically as a VA, I specialize in social, social media management, content creation and copywriting and just all things Instagram. So I like to share everything that I've learned through experience and through studying and researching um, with small business owners and also implement that for my clients as well. Cool. So what would like a day in the life sort of look like for you? What sort of work are you doing for your clients? So mostly at the moment, it's social media management. Um, when I first started, it was a lot more copywriting and that was for things like websites, um, newsletters, funnels, that sort of thing. Um, but I guess like with anything, as you have more experience doing things, you realize what you enjoy more. And although my background is in writing and I thought the copywriting would be what I loved the most, it turns out I really love the social media management. I think it gives me a bit more um, freedom in terms of creativity and yeah so day to day I'm working on my clients social media um, strategies and making sure that for the next week or two they've got their content all scheduled and ready and they just don't have to think about it and I think that's one of the main reasons 
I really want to help small business owners. I've come from a background of working in small business when I was younger, so I know that how stressful it can be. And now being an owner myself, I know how stressful it can be. And social media is one of those things that is so important for businesses, whether service-based or product-based. Um, but it's probably one of the first things that people don't do when they're busy doing everything else. So yeah, I like that I'm alleviating stress for people and doing something that they just don't have an interest in or don't have the expertise in. Yeah, cool. So what sort of hours do you work or like what does your work environment look like and is that something you really enjoy? <laughs> my work environment changes every day. So I'm in my office at the moment, which I've got like my desk and my day bed. But because I work from home, I literally move from place to place. And some days like I'm more productive in my office. Other days I'm like, I just want to sit on the couch. Um, so it's very flexible. And that's like one of the amazing things about working for yourself. So you have that flexibility. Um, some days I work in my pajamas. Some days I will get up and go to the gym or take the dogs to the beach and go for a walk on the beach and then come home and just stay in my active wear all day. So it's very nice. I like that part of being my own boss. Um, I also like not having to wear makeup every day. It's so good. <laughs> And you know what's really funny is as you're talking about this, I'm like, yep, I knew that, I knew that, I knew that because you share all this in your stories. And I think it's a really strong strategy to really show that day in the life of you as a business owner and a potential um, a client might be looking at, at that and being like, oh, this is what she's going to be, what makes her whole. And I really like that. I really like her. So what do you think is uh, uh, the best thing about Instagram stories or what have you found that that's really helped you in your business achieve? Instagram stories are so amazing for being able to showcase a different facet of yourself and your business. So obviously with the feed, um, you're showing content that is obviously relevant to your audience Obviously, that's the name of the game. Um, but people love that human-to-human -human connection. We're right in the middle of human-to-human -human marketing. And like I've heard you say many times before, people buy from people. They don't buy from brands necessarily. So having that connection, um, showing your face, showing a little bit of like, this is real life. This is like, it's not all peachy keen and it's not all easy and some days, um, I might not start work to 12 because I'm just not in the headspace or I might be working to 10 p.m. at night. It just kind of gives that element of realness and people totally appreciate that. They appreciate a bit of vulnerability and they like, they like to get to know you. Like they like to see the face behind the brand um, and yeah, to learn more about you because we connect with people. Yeah, cool. So how do you think uh, businesses can start showing that people connection to show who they are behind the brand? So I think like a really good place to start is just show little behind the scenes snippets of your day. If you're not confident putting your face on it straight away, like showing your face straight away, then yeah, just show little behind the scenes, like working away or... Um, in like unpacking new arrivals if you work in a shop or if you have a delivery service like a food delivery or a juice delivery service show the process of things being made it just kind of um, brings people into your life and they're like oh okay cool this is the process and they just they feel that extra little bit of connection with you um, but I do definitely think there's a lot of power in showing your face and I know better than anyone how daunting that can be like I still find being on stories showing my face a little bit awkward and um, hard at times but there are ways that you can get around it and I definitely believe that you have to feel uncomfortable for before you feel comfortable so just do it just give it a go Worst case scenario, you press delete 20 times before you post it. Like, that's the thing with stories. You can sit there and do a few takes until you're happy with it. Um, and definitely use the filters. Like, 
that just that's like a little security blanket. You know, some days you don't feel great or you've just got home from the gym, but you want to share something about your day. Just put a filter on, a little fun filter, and yeah, it just kind of helps you feel a bit more comfortable. So what do you think businesses are currently doing wrong in this space? Because um, there are definitely some businesses taking this on as a really great opportunity, but sometimes there's things that they're not doing as well as what they could be doing, or maybe they're just not doing it at all. Yeah, I think that is the biggest thing, is if that they're not doing it at all. And Instagram like actually um, announced earlier this month, I think it was actually last month, that there are now... Um, 500 million people using Instagram stories and Mark Zuckerberg I think it was yesterday he actually said look Instagram stories are going to take over the feed this year audio and visual is just it's the next big thing so if you're not on it now then you're going to miss out on it and there's definitely people who like I, I know some of my friends even they watch stories but they don't scroll the feed so what if that person who's only watching stories is your ideal client. Like that is the person that you want to connect with and that you want to sell your product or service to. And you're completely missing them because you just don't go on stories. So I think, yeah, that's the biggest, the biggest thing that people, businesses are doing wrong at the moment is not being on there. And with the growth only going to get bigger and bigger, it's better to start now, get comfortable so that it just becomes part of your day-to-day -day routine. And I think this is something that I personally struggled with at first. I was like, what What do I even put on stories? Like, people don't care about that. But then I was thinking about all the people that I watch and love watching their stories. And there's a few people that I watch quite religiously because I'm like, ah, they always, they're always fun. They always, like, brighten my day. They've always got good value. And I was like, they're just documenting their day that's all they're doing. So you might be doing something that you think is like, oh, this is mundane because I do it every single day, but other people don't know about that. So just pick up your phone and, you know, just show something. It can even be you enjoying your coffee in the morning and just say this is part of my morning routine or, yeah. So I think that's the biggest thing that people do wrong is they're not optimising it because that's just another opportunity to reach your clients and your customers. So yeah, go jump on. Awesome, yeah, I totally agree. And I think sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming and daunting and you're just like, I don't even know what to post on my Instagram feed, let alone in my stories. Um, so what would be a strategy to sort of get over that hump and to be able to create content more consistently? The good thing about stories is that it is very on the spot it doesn't have to be planned but if it is something that you struggle with maybe just be like okay this week I'm going to jump on stories three times and have like a little plan or something that you're going to showcase so that you're like okay I've kind of got a little bit of a strategy and idea what I'm going to talk about here um so that can help um also like I said before just use filters if you're like the biggest hurdle for you to get over is showing your face and feeling a little bit uneasy about being on camera is use the filters just to kind of hide a little bit of you. Like it just takes away an element of vulnerability, but you're still being very vulnerable because you are showing you as a person and the person behind a brand. So do you have any recommendations for how many times a week, how many times a day you should be posting on stories? What I like to do, I try to post on stories every day, but that's not always possible. I understand that especially for people who um, are working more in like a structured environment, I think when you're your own boss, there's more possibilities to get to, you know, jump on stories. And it's the same with engaging. There's more possibilities just because you have a little bit more freedom. Um, the one thing that I try and do, if I'm not posting on my feed, I post on my stories. You want to be relevant all the time. So consistency is key when it comes to social media. If you drop off the face of the earth for a week or a couple of days, people will forget about you because the algorithm won't be showing your content anymore. So um, yeah, consistency is definitely key. So yeah, one of the rules that I have is because I think that sometimes creating content for the feed can be 
more time consuming and harder to do if like you just, sometimes your brain's not wired and you're not ready you don't have that creative creativity to come up with a caption so if there's a day that I'm like oh I've got nothing today or I'm just not feeling it then I will make sure that I'm definitely on stories as well um so I think optimum is daily um if that's not possible definitely try and do your work days at least like Monday to Friday if that's your work days or um yeah or whatever whatever your work days are um but it's also good to show parts of your weekend as well because that shows a little bit of your the, the human behind the brand and what you get up to um on the weekends too but yeah optimally daily cool cool how often do you reckon daily like to get at the top of that um I guess where the stories get bumped up all the time I will it always helps to get bumped up to the top, it also depends on some of the content, obviously, but there's little tricks like hashtags, um, geotagging, which we, I guess we can go into later as well, but that stuff definitely helps with that. Um, I don't know. I think if you've got something to say, this is one thing I sometimes waffle on because I'm a bit of a waffler. <laughs> I go on tangent, if you haven't noticed already. But <laughs> if you're um, doing a talking story, try and keep it to like three to four stories because unless you've got something really, really important to say and people are like, yes, hanging on to every your every word. But if you waffle on too much, people you're just going to lose the interest of your viewers. So try and keep that to like three to four stories um and otherwise yeah maybe two to three times if you're just taking a snap of a, a photo or something like that but again it, it just really depends on the time that you have um and like i said try and balance it if you're not on your feed that day definitely get on stories but if you're on the feed there's a little bit less pressure to jump on your stories but there are definitely ways to optimize the stuff that you put on your feed that day and showcase it in your stories as well to jump people from both platforms. Well, not platforms, but you know what I mean. Jump them from the stories to the feed. And I think that leads perfectly into what are your top five things that a small business owner can start implementing right now to get more out of their Instagram stories. Okay, so kind of what I just said about um, sharing what you've put on your feed onto your stories so not just that but resharing other people's content as well so it's such a great way to build a community if you're if you are on your feed and you stumble across something that really resonates with you share that on your stories you'll get noticed by the person that posted it and you're also just building a wider audience like even yesterday someone shared um the content i posted about engagement who was over east somewhere also like in the similar space creative space but then I got someone who hadn't followed me had never like landed on my page before comment on it and be like wow these are really great tips thank you to this person for posting it on their stories because I would have never found you so you see how like yeah you can see how much it can build a community um so yeah number one is definitely reshare your own content and other people's content um, I've also already touched on showing your face and I think that is so important. Um, yeah, you want to show, I guess part of the stories, it's like even with your feed, I don't know about you, but I definitely notice when I'm in a picture or I show me, I get so much more interaction because people connect with people. So showing your face on stories is really, really important. Um, and like I said, it's one of those things you'll feel really uncomfortable and awkward at first, but it gets easier. Like everything is baby steps and soon it will just be easy for you. I'm still, I still haven't quite mastered the out in public talking on my stories, but I will one day. <laughs> um, and another tip is to use subtitles on your talking stories. Now this is something that does take a little bit of extra time. You'll film your story and then you'll go back and listen and just um, type your subtitles on there. And the reason for that, there's a few reasons, but 
you might have people who are hearing impaired and they can't actually hear you. Me laugh. Did you see me laugh? <laughs> um, <laughs> see, working from home life. Um, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, you might have people who are hearing impaired. <laughs> she just wants to be on the screen as well. <laughs> it's all right, let her, let her, she's very cute. They get on my stories all the time as well. <laughs> um, yeah, people who are hearing impaired, there's, I don't know about you, but I'm always watching stories when I'm in bed at night time and my partner's asleep. So I don't want to have the noise on. So having subtitles means you, people can still listen um, What if they're in public as well. And some people just prefer reading. Like some people are visual in term and audio based, um, but other people would prefer to read and they can get through it quicker as well. So definitely subtitles. <laughs> Sorry about Mila. But yeah, subtitles are definitely a really good tip. Um, and yeah, I mentioned quickly before the location tags and hashtags. So I don't know, not a lot of people know this, but you can actually have up to 10 hashtags on your stories. And we all know hashtags is just another way to increase your reach, just the same as it is on your posts when you put up to 30 and definitely use all 30 hashtags on your posts. You can use 10 on stories. So people search hashtags on stories just as much as they do on, um, on the feed. So yeah, you can even hide them. You don't have to have them blatantly across the thing. You can just make them really, because you can just obviously shrink the size of your text. So shrink it really, really small and then blur it behind, a, um, behind an image or change it to the color of the background so you can't even see them. So it's not even like this blatant, oh, everyone look at me. Um, I've got all these hashtags on here. It's sneaky, sneaky. So that's definitely a good one. And yeah, on that note, I do have a video um, which actually shows you how to hide them. So if you want to watch that, you can watch that now. That one, I'll just be linking up here somewhere. Cool. That's awesome. Um, and yeah, same with location tags. So people, you might even end up on the location tag story. So that's another way for people to find you. So geotagging where you are, um, especially if people, like if you have, you're in Perth and you, you're a bricks and mortar in Perth made, and you want people to come into your store or you're a service base in Perth and you only want to work with Perth businesses, then that's just another way for people to find you. Um, and you can make it really specific. And the other thing with location tagging is if you're at a cafe or something like that, you might even get regrammed by them. They might reshare it on their stories and that's another way for people to find you. It's just, it's like inception. <laughs> good yeah yeah I love that that's a really good way of explaining it it's like yeah and then you share that they shared and then <laughs> you comment on their share and then they share that <laughs> yeah yeah she's like ding 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 <laughs> inception um and finally my last tip is to use the interactive features that stories offers so that's like the question sticker and the polls and the countdown um, it's just another really good way to get to know your audience so you can it's like you're, you're conducting your own little mini survey to make sure that people are liking what you're doing um, and finding out what their pain points are and what things they want to see more of so definitely using um, yeah the stories and the question sticker to help with interaction and to learn more about your audience Perfect. Awesome. Well, um, you've given us so many awesome tips and I'll be providing a link to all your socials so people can start following you and seeing what you're up to. Um, but just to close, what uh, do you do to help you show up consistently on Instagram stories every day? Um, I just do it. Like, honestly, I'm like, no, I just got, if you overthink it, it's the same with anything. Nike was onto something when they said just do it like it's so relevant in so many ways but if you overthink and you're just like oh put it off and you leave it to the end of the day and then you're stressing because you're like oh I was meant to show up on stories today but I didn't then it just never gets done so I think the biggest tip is just do it 
feel like get used to feeling uncomfortable for a while because it will become comfortable um yeah and just get it done i love that so much so how can people find out more about you where can they follow you so you can find me at on Instagram. That's the main place, really, um, at Eloise Smith underscore VA. Uh, I've also got my website, which is EloiseSmithVA.com, and I'm on Facebook where you can find me on Eloise Smith Virtual Assistant. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming on today, Eloise. I know your tips are going to be so, so useful um, for everyone watching this video. Thanks, Kate. Thanks for having me. How great is Eloise? I love this girl. Her energy is so infectious and I just love her number one tip. Just do it. Because it's so true, Instagram stories can be this overwhelming beast that is so hard to achieve and so hard to actually create something for consistently day in, day out. But it doesn't have to be that hard. It doesn't have to be polished. It doesn't have to be perfect. Actually, it should be the opposite in fact. So just do it. Start getting on Instagram stories today. Comment below with a yes if you're going to start using Instagram stories today. Uh, start implementing some of the ideas that Eloise gave or come up with something of your own. Make sure you start showing your face though. Don't just take photos of your coffee. Well, that's great. Photos of your face or videos of your face are such a great way to build that person-to-person -person connection. So as always, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I release new videos every Tuesday on marketing and mindset strategies for small businesses. And I absolutely love this whole space of Instagram and storytelling. So you're gonna get so many more insights if you keep watching my videos. Next up, I recommend watching my interview with Amanda who shares her strategies and tips for creating brand photography because this is another great way to leverage your brand on Instagram. So go watch that one now. But that's it for me for today. I will see you next Tuesday with another video I know you're going to love. So bye for now.